her back. And if it's looking a little hazy, that's because we're in SoCal. It's summer, and that means it's fire season. So the lake's been just shrouded in smoke all day today. Sucks, but it's just the reality of the uh, situation that we live in here in SoCal. Actually, just California in general. I wanted to take the time, since it's been a relatively unproductive day on the water, to go over the 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there, most basic tools or equipment that every trophy bass, hunter, chaser, whatever you want to call it, should always have in the boat. First things first, catch and release. A little bit goes a long way and it will help your fish survive. One of the most important things when you're chasing giant fish is to make sure you take care of the fish. I've been using it for years. I know other guys use it. It's really helpful. I'll just do a quick readout of what it is. Calms bass with all natural sedative, stimulates and protects slime coat, reduces weight loss by preventing stomach regurgitation, prevents shock and restores electrolyte balance. Instantly removes harmful chlorine and other toxic harmful water treatment chemicals, boost oxygen transfer, protects against overall post-release infection. It's an all-around stress-reducing compound. So number one, if you're chasing giant fish, right there, catch and release. You can find it at, you know, Tackle Warehouse Online, any good store will also have catch and release. So if you got catch and release, you also need to make sure your live well is working. I know that's real basic sounding. If you're catching big fish, you wanna make sure you got a place to put that fish so she can rest. You don't wanna be hauling her around the boat for a long period of time. If you're just gonna catch it and instantly let it go, sure, don't worry about your live well. But if you're gonna be storing that fish, make sure your live well is working. Make sure that you got a good flow going. Constantly wanna be exchanging that water, getting new fresh water into that system so she can breathe stress-free. I know that's real basic and that's kind of common sense, but these are things that when I say they, they should they should never leave the boat. They should always be in the boat or in the vehicle, but a net and a big net, depending on the level your boat sits up off the water, really determines what size net you're gonna need, but preferably something that's large enough, but light enough so that you can hold it out with one hand. You don't want something that's gonna be too much for you to handle on your own. Next, another common one, but just a really rock solid set of pliers. These Gerber ones, just like the, the shears, these are really strong. They're not bending, they're not doing any weird stuff so that I can actually make sure I'm getting a hold of the hook and get it out of that fish's mouth. Pliers, always in the boat. Next, the best split ring pliers on the market. That's what you need to have on your boat. Because if you're chasing big fish, they're bound to bend out treble hooks. Now, you should always have backup hooks in the boat. I, I would assume that people do that, but a solid set of split ring, <laughs> holy cow, tongue twist. A solid set of split ring pliers will save your, your thumbnails like no other. These ones right here are Texas Tackle. They're the best in my opinion. The way that tooth right there sits on the flat surface, dude, easy. They make them in three different sizes, I believe. But yeah, these Texas Tackle, stainless steel. I wish they made a black handle, that orange glow, but yeah, split ring pliers. These are easy to overlook, but they make your life so much easier on the water. A solid set of dikes. You don't need the giant ones, but these will serve multiple purposes. Sometimes you gotta cut a hook away just so you can get it out of the fish. It's poking through one side of the fish's face. You just can't get it out. You're causing too much stress for that fish. Grab them dikes, pop, cut that barb off, cut the whole hook off, and you can get that hook right out of the fish's mouth. Serving almost the exact same purpose is if you hook yourself. You penetrate your skin, pops out the other side. I've done this multiple times going up through the fingers or whatever. If you have a solid set of dikes on the boat, it's gonna be able to cut most 
hooks. It's a lifesaver instead of sitting there tugging and tugging and you know, it's not good. It's not good feeling. So guys forget about that, but it does happen and having a rock solid set of dikes that can cut through most hooks, you're gonna, you're gonna appreciate it when you need them. These ones are a old set of Shimano ones, but man, they're tough, super tough. A Benz mender. When you're catching fish deep and you're bringing them up, you know, when you're catching big fish and you're grinding them things to the boat, they're gonna be floaters. You have to fizz those fish. You can't just throw them back in the water and watch them. Oh, 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 oh. You can see it in the live well and they're, if they're in the live well. Get a Benz mender, study it, make sure you know where to poke the fish. Don't just go in there stabbing around inside that mouth because you're gonna end up doing more harm than good. Trust me, I'm guilty of it. Sometimes you, <laughs> you haven't studied up in a while and you're looking at that fish and you're like, oh no, 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 that's it. And you, and then you just got blood. You're, oh. Did it to a buddy not too long ago. I felt horrible. Luckily it wasn't a giant fish, so we can cull some of those here and there. But surprisingly, I put that fish in the live well, used some live well treatment. The fish ended up recovering. It swam away just fine, but that does not mean that that fish didn't float up to the surface 10 hours later. Study up on it, watch the videos, read the literature. You'll be doing a service to a lot of fish that you're catching deep by fizzing them. This right here, a plug knocker. If you're throwing big baits, especially at the price they are these days, and you don't have a plug knocker, you're running it super hot. I've had this one probably, hmm, eight years, nine years. I actually have two of them in the boat in case I snag this one, break it off. I have another one. This is a 44 mag. I'm not sure if he's still making them, but a plug knocker will save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I don't care if this thing would have cost me a hundred dollars. It didn't, I think they were 40 bucks or something. It saved me thousands of dollars so far at this point. This part right here, a buddy of mine, an uh, old buddy of mine, Greg Ross, actually recommended this. You can just pick this up at Home Depot. But it allows for the plug knocker, once it's rigged on the line, to drop really fast. If I get my hands out of the way fast enough. That thing's going to slide down that line super fast, come in contact with the bait. Boom! And hopefully when it does that, those chains will hook up on the hooks and you can rip it out of there. And who cares if you're bending hooks or you're doing any of that stuff, you just want your main bait back. If you're throwing big baits, you need a big plug knocker with chains. This is a 44 mag. Again, I'm not sure if he's still making them. Last time I checked, he was, but lifesavers right there. Next thing, seems really common sense. These should never leave the boat. I hate, I feel like I'm kind of talking down, but uh, you just, you see dudes on the water that you're like, wait, what? You should always have a scale in the boat, but you should always have two scales in the boat because if one goes bad, you have the other. That saves a lot of heartache for the fish. Instead of dragging them across, you got a giant fish and you're dragging them across the lake, then you're taking them out, laying them some basket that's on the dock scale and all this nonsense. No, oh, pull ashore, hook that fish up, weigh it, boom, back in the live well, real quick and easy. You can even do it instantaneously, like catch the fish, put the fish in the live well, give it a minute or two to chill, pull it out, weigh it, put it back in. Having scales, you just gotta have it. There's no excuse if you're chasing giant bass, there's no excuse not to have scales in the boat and multiple scales. I sound a little condescending when I say that because, you know, nobody's perfect, but we do take those things for granted. And, and I do run into guys that end up coming across big fish that don't have a scale in the boat. Make sure you always have a scale in the boat, two scales in the boat. Another thing, and this is, sounds like a shameless product plug, but you gotta have some type of measuring device. Now it doesn't have to be the working class zero stuff. It can be any type of measuring device, but something that actually shows the true size of this fish. Because stiff arm photos, all that stuff, 
doesn't really give you an accurate scale, especially if you're going to end up being in a record class fish, and that could be a lake record, whatever it might be. Something that gives a scale of the fish in inches or centimeters, whatever it is. If you don't want a big board, you don't have that space, you can always just have a simple measuring tape. The measuring tape is beautiful too because not only can you get the length, you can also get that girth. And in any real sense, in a, in a record, you should get both measurements. Get that length and you get that girth. So that's another key thing, some type of measurement device. It's not a requirement, but it's definitely of value if you're gonna be chasing giant fish. And when I talk about giant fish, again, I, I want to reiterate, I'm talking about giant fish for your body of water. I just can't stress that point enough because I, I know guys kind of look at things a little bit different, but I always tell dudes like, dude, giant bass relative to your body of water. That's what you should be stoked on. And last, everybody has one on them these days, but somehow it occasionally doesn't happen, but you always need to have a camera of some sort just to document it. If that's not your shtick, totally get it but you need to document them. Good documentation, it's key. You wanna remember this stuff, so you don't want a photo that you're like, oh God, like what? And people are like, dude, that looks like a three pounder. No, take nice quality photos, get a good camera. If you can't deal with an iPhone, get a GoPro, set it up, have it running. Video is the way to go as far as documentation. There's no denying it. There's nothing sketchy happening if you have it on video. It's, you can see somebody cast, you can see them retrieve, you can see them get bit, you can see them land. It's all there. And then you get to actually see the fish being weighed, all that good stuff. I understand it's not for everybody, but having a camera to document that stuff, especially if you're in record territory, you gotta have it. There's just no way around it. But that's pretty much it. Those are like basic tools that everyone that's chasing trophy bash should always have in their boat. No excuses. Those things should always be in their boat. Thanks for watching. If you like the videos, make sure you subscribe. If you wanna get notifications when we post new videos, make sure you hit that bell. Please make sure you like, comment. Actually, good point, bring it up right now. If you feel like there's something that I missed, write it in a comment. I'm totally open to hearing things. There might be stuff that I just don't even think about that are no-brainers like I should have in the boat that I currently don't. When I talk about this stuff, I'm not talking about normal safety equipment, any of that stuff, or baits, or whatever. I'm talking about things that I know guys do forget that you just kind of like, huh, all right. So if you got something, leave it in the comments. If you want information about product releases, make sure you slide on over to our websites and you subscribe to our email newsletter. Those will pop up in a window or they're in the drop down menus. Like I always say, we appreciate all the support. And until next time, get out there, and I hope you stick a giant. And that's what I'm gonna try and do. But I don't know if I have too much faith it's gonna happen today. So, all right, bye.